We ended the previous episode with Lorelei discovering Rory's secret relationship. And now we get to see the fallout from that. We open on Rory returning from Chilton to meet with Dean at the market he works at. And I will admit, as much as I've been giving Dean a hard time, he does have decent chemistry with Rory. Nice apron. Nice uniform. Well, you know, I sewed the buttons on with silver thread, so that sets me apart from the crowd. That being said, what is the problem most people have with Dean? Well, it's things like this. Guess what's in each hand you get the soda. Okay, the whole concept of a free soda is that it's free. You don't have to work for it. In this hand, you have... In the context of the scene itself, I understand where the writers were coming from. It was intended to be a fairly sweet moment, and the fact that Rory does end up liking this kiss does show it to be okay, though in sort of like when you apply the sort of real world changes that have occurred when it comes to consent, it has become more questionable about whether or not this is the right thing to do. I'm not really the best judge on whether or not this is considered to be really negative or if it is uh, not as bad as some people may think. So it's mainly up to you personal preference. Thank you. Rory's emotions are naturally all over the place because of this and runs off to tell Lane. And I got to appreciate how it's all done in one take. I got kissed. And, and, I, and I shoplifted. Are you serious? Who kissed you? Dean, the new kid? She's eager to tell Lorelai about this as well, but then, remembering the events of the pilot... Does he have a motorcycle? Because if you're going to throw your life away, he better have a motorcycle! ...decides to hold off on telling her until the right time. The last time the subject of boys came up, it got very ugly. Well, that was different. She thought you were going to quit school over a guy. Yes, over Dean. Plus, she's a little preoccupied with the broken fridge. No, I'm crabby. I'm crabby and useless. Unfortunately for Rory, Lorelai ends up finding about the kiss anyway from Mrs. Kim. She came in here and told Lane she kissed a boy in the grocery store. The grocery store, where we buy our food. And this was in spite of Lane and her cunning ruse to hide this fact. It was so, so well hidden. Who kissed you? The Lord, Mama. Oh. Now she has this information, Lorelai hopes Rory will now spill the beans, as it were. When Rory fails to provide her with some answers, Lorelai decides to seek them out for herself, going on a covert mission to the market, dragging poor Luke along. Where we got kissed. What? Where we had our first kiss, and that guy did it. Initially fairly hostile towards Dean, and in full parental protection mode. Oh, look at him. Look how smug he is. He's bagging groceries. It's hard to be smug bagging groceries. That Lothario over there has wormed his way into my daughter's heart and mouth, and for that he must die. That's it. Let's go. No! You're not going to kill the bag boy. Lorelai is thankfully talked down by Luke as he tries to make her see sense. Why didn't she tell me? What? Why didn't Rory tell me about the kiss? Maybe she didn't know you'd take it so well. This is a good opportunity to show off a different side of their relationship. Rather than focusing on the romantic sense, the will they, won't they, that we've been having up to this point, it's very much a more casual friend uh, discussion, and it goes to show how much Lorelai and Luke care for each other and respect each other as people as well as potential romantic partners. But why? Why didn't she tell me? We tell each other everything. This is different. I'm okay with the guy thing, because not talking about guys in our personal lives, that's me and my mom. That is not me and Rory. I will show her that I think this is great. Once she sees that I think this is great, everything will be back to normal between us, right? But unfortunately, this is Lorelai we're talking about. So, kissed any good boys lately? How long have you known? Since this morning. You didn't think you were going to be able to keep it a secret, did you? You were making out in the market. Once they have the discussion about Dean, Things go fairly well for them, and the tension is eased somewhat. You're completely weirded out by this, aren't you? I didn't love the way I found out, but you're getting older. These things are bound to happen occasionally. That evening, the two head into town to collect snacks for their movie night, which includes going to the market, which it, Rory is naturally embarrassed about. 
The two head in with ease, and they get to share a sweet uh, moment when they discuss some of Dean's more positive physical aspects. He's got great eyes. You gotta love a guy with great eyes. Yeah. And a nice smile. Very nice. Think we can get him to turn around? It's nice too. And we get Dean and Lorelai's first official interaction, and it could be much worse. It goes fairly well. Nice to meet you, Dean. Yeah, you too. So well, in fact that Lorelai decides to invite Dean along to their movie night. Do you want to come over? We're ordering pizza, we got a movie. The neighborhood's got a pool going to see who falls into a sugar coma first. I'm the favorite, it might be fun. Much to the irritation of Rory. You invited Dean to our house. He's the boy that I like. I know, I looked for one that you hated, but it was really short notice. So what started out as a simple evening binge eating watching Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory for the untimed time is now Rory's first official date with Dean. Now I'm supposed to look pretty and girly, which is completely impossible because I'm gross and I have nothing to wear. And it doesn't particularly start very well with Lorelai's friends trying to get to know Dean, which makes him particularly uncomfortable. She's already freaked out that I invited him here. If she thinks I'm parading him around in front of all my friends, she'll kill me. I did not invite her here. Why didn't you just set up a camera and broadcast it all over the internet? Because I don't think that big. Plus, Lorelai accidentally starts sharing embarrassing stories about Rory's childhood, though she manages to cleverly save it by the end. Um, when Rory was little, she found out that one was called a weeping willow, and so she spent hours trying to cheer it up. No, I'm sorry, that was me. When it comes to actually watching the film and eating, in all honesty, it does seem fairly nice. As someone who's not really that outgoing and not really keen on doing activities that much, this is a fairly nice kind of idea for a date. Um, I know the whole parent being there thing isn't ideal, but if their parent was like Lorelai, I'd probably be fine with it. As the evening goes on, Lorelai realises the Dean and Rory probably deserve time alone and subtly sneaks off to let them watch the rest of the film by themselves. And at first this does go well for them until Rory discovers that Lorelai has disappeared and begins to panic, rushing off to find her. What happened? Did the bag boy try something? He's sitting there and he's watching the movie and he's perfect and he smells really good. What? In contrast with Lorelai's overprotectiveness, we now get to see Rory's dependency on her relationship with her mother. And I don't know what I'm doing here. You're sitting in the kitchen. What kind of chaperone are you? Me? Hey, I'm not trying to be a chaperone. I'm trying to be a girlfriend. Well, switch gears, because I'm freaking out here. I said thank you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You, you said thank you? When he kissed me. He kissed you, and you said thank you? Yes. Well, that was very polite. This now gives Lorelai an opportunity to be alone with Dean, and she uses this time to very much lay down the law with him on how this relationship is going to go with Rory. Ah, here comes the talk. How about I talk, you listen. I don't believe she'd waste her time with some loser. But you're watching me. Sweetheart, the whole town is watching you. However, she is prepared to warm up to him as time goes on, so long as he doesn't end up hurting Rory. But you're her best friend, and what you think means everything to her. If you hate me, then I don't have a shot in hell with Rory. Supposed first date of Rory and Dean goes off fairly well, ultimately. Thank you. <laughs> and so ends Kiss and Tell. Before we get to the recap, I'm just going to go over something that isn't really connected to the plot, but it's more about the visual aesthetics of the show. Something that I really appreciate that you wouldn't really notice otherwise. A key part of the world building is establishing that Stars Hollow is very much a sort of tourist town. And so whenever there are seasonal events, they uh, try and play up to the tourists by having uh, regular festivals or celebrations going above and beyond to sell the aesthetic with costumes and decorations. In this particular case, it's focusing on fall, uh, autumn time, and it's not particularly plot relevant other than some jokes at the expense of Luke. Are you mad at me too? I mean, a man can't choose whether or not he wants a picture of a fat, stupid bird on his wall. My God, that's the reason the damn pilgrims came here in the first place. You have to decorate. I don't have to do anything but serve food. And coffee and muffins. It's a good bit of world building and 
they will have more relevance to the narrative in future episodes. Now it's time for the recap. There's not really too much to say about this episode, it's fairly small scale. It was a good chance to get to know Dean a little better, though whether or not that's a good thing uh, remains to be seen. It's good to see a further uh, dive into the relationship between Lorelai and Rory and what is off limits for them, given how their relationship is akin to friends rather than uh, mother and daughter most of the time. But until then, if you haven't already, please support the channel by hitting the subscribe button, turn on notifications to make sure you stay up to date with everything that is released. If you enjoy the video, give it a like, comment below your thoughts on it, and you can find me on Twitter here. And I'll see you for the next episode, Love and War and Snow. Hey, my mom's not wearing any underwear. Well, you aren't.